Good afternoon and welcome to the Glenlion Norfolk School graduation ceremony. We are joined today with our grad class and with people from all over the world to celebrate the achievements of our GNS graduates. While we cannot all be physically together, we are no less proud of all these young people. Before we continue, and on National Indigenous Peoples Day, we would like to acknowledge and respect the Lekwungen speaking peoples on whose traditional territory we stand, and the Songhees, Esquimalt, and Wasanich peoples whose historical relationships with the land continue to this day. Please rise for the singing of O Canada. Thank you to our choir. Mr. Curtis Munstock, Chair of the Glenlion Norfolk School Board of Governors, opens our afternoon by bringing you greetings from the board. Mr. Munstock. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Palm. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Curtis Munstock, and as GNS Society Board Chair, it is a great honor for me to be here with uh, you today, class of 2021. This has been a really strange year, a challenging year, but as you can see, there seems to be small smatterings of normalcy coming back. Uh, you all get to sit through live speeches again. That's exciting, right? Um, we have so much to be thankful for, for this year. And on behalf of the Board of Governors, I would like to express my gratitude to all those who have contributed to an amazingly successful year. Firstly, I'd like to thank your parents, grandparents, guardians, not only for trusting uh, GNS to deliver the academic program that suited you best, but for also trusting GNS to successfully execute its COVID-19 protocols and for adhering to them at home thus enabling you to attend classes on a daily basis, as you have in past years. Secondly, I would like to thank all of our volunteers. To all who have generously volunteered their time to the school this year, again in uncertain circumstances, their generosity is so greatly appreciated by everyone on the receiving end of it. The PAC found new and innovative ways to keep our community engaged with various virtual events. So I would really like to extend my thanks to them for their ability to reinvent themselves because it's not easy to organize community, community engaging social events when everybody has to stay home. Thirdly, what can we say about our faculty and staff? Their devotion to their jobs and to you, their students, and also their courage in showing up for work every day. Because as you remember back in September, we knew a lot less than we do now about the virus. 
So there would always be a little bit of, perhaps a little bit of uncertainty regarding one's own personal health, which is completely understandable. Our teachers and our staff in their selflessness all showed up in September and have really worked their collective tails off for the entire school year, diligently ensuring a safe and clean environment for you to learn in and for their colleagues to work in. I can only imagine how exhausting it must have been to follow that extensive book-length COVID protocol list, all while delivering the instruction and student experience that we've all come to expect from them. The fact that they delivered stability and continuity at school, while things were so unstable and discontinuous outside of it, to me is a great testament to their professionalism, to their good character, and to their excellence. So thank you, faculty and staff. And also a special thank you to our head of school, Chad Holtum. Where's Chad? There's Chad over in the corner there. Um, Chad had a very short, uh, how should we say, honeymoon period as, as a, a first year head. Uh, the amount of work that Chad put in this year has been exhausting for me just to watch. Being a first year head was always going to be challenging, but to have a pandemic thrown in there with it, I think that Chad and the rest of his leadership team exceeded all expectations, so congratulations. Fourthly and finally, the class of 2021. You probably will not soon forget your grade 12 year. I've always been awed by the amount uh, a GNS grade 12-er is expected to digest th through the course of their final year. Uh, the amount of hard work you've had to put in and the commitment you'd ha you've had to ex uh, exhibit to get to where you are now is truly impressive. My guess is, and it's just my guess, uh, my guess is that most of your parents did not have to do nearly as much work in their final year at high school as you've had to do in yours. Again, it's just my guess. Um, and during a pandemic, lest we forget, I know that your parents, and all of us for that matter, are very proud of what you have accomplished and that you will take your experiences from GNS and use them to be positive additions to whatever scene you happen upon. Which brings us to the future and the importance of you all continue, continuing to be risk takers in it. I've always thought that the risk taker bit in the IB profile was a bit undervalued or undersold. Obviously, we aren't talking about reckless risk taking. We're not talking about going out and buying GameStop with your life savings. We are, of course, talking about considered risk taking where you analyze data, you consider what is known and what's unknown, you think critically, measure the risks, and then make your decision. It could be a decision about which field of medicine to specialize in, for example, or which company to work for, or what type of startup to, to, to work on. And yes, even if or when you should start a family. The point is that you will be faced with countless decisions to make in your futures that will involve taking risk. But what are the alternatives to taking risk? If you take no risk, you have no, there is no innovation. If you take no risk, there is no growth. There will be some who, due to living through a year and a half long pandemic, will suffer from some sort of belief scarring effects and become risk averse to the point where they can't make any potentially life-altering decisions at all. But I don't see that with you. You know what it is to take considered risks because you have had to take several of them during your time here. So don't stop. Keep making those bold, well-informed decisions and then after you have accumulated a few of them, come back here and tell us about them. Share, share them with us, especially with those younger than you the stories of all the fabulous things you have done. Please stay connected with us here at GNS and help inspire those that will come after you. And with that, a very warm and emphatic congratulations to you, class of 2021. I wish you all the happiness, good fortune, and fulfillment for, for the future. Thank you and bye for now.
Thank you, Mr. Munstock. I now welcome Mr. Chad Holtham, head of school, to the stage for his remarks. Mr. Holtham. Well, good evening, grads, parents, families, faculty, and friends, and thank you for giving me the privilege of addressing you this afternoon. I'm so honored to be here to celebrate the Glenline Norfolk School graduating class of 2021. As has been mentioned earlier, this has been an unusual year. In fact, my guess is that when the history of GNS is written many years from now, 2020, 2021 will be acknowledged as the least conventional year in the history of our school. It's been a year in which we've been required to adapt and strategize and revise and compromise. But through it all, we've persevered, both as a school and as a community. I have a lot of gratitude for all the people who helped make that happen, and I would like to publicly acknowledge the outstanding work of the GNS Senior Leadership Team and the GNS Society and Foundation Boards. I would particularly like to recognize the contributions of Mr. Cole Carlson, our Deputy Head of Academics. He has only been with us for one year, but he has already had a significant impact on our school community. Thank you, Cole, the Boards, and the Leadership Team. I've learned a lot of lessons over the last 16 months, about myself and about our school. And if you'll indulge me, I just wanted to share one of those lessons with you this evening. And so here it is. There is no substitute for communication. Open and honest dialogue is critical in times of challenge because openness and honesty lead to trust. And without the trust of both my colleagues and our students and families, tonight's event would have felt very different we wouldn't have had the successful year that we did. So I want to say thank you to our parents for your willingness to be receptive to our efforts, to celebrate and congratulate us when things have gone well, and to be open and honest, and most of all constructive, when things could have gone better. I've said this before, but I feel like on a night like tonight, it's worth repeating. GNS is a partnership between the school and the family. And like any successful partnership, it takes work, it demands effort, and it requires communication. I've been overwhelmed by the messages of support and enthusiasm that I've received from so many of the people with us today. From our parents, who have been a source of constant support and patience, thank you. To our faculty and staff, who have continued their work of inspiring the great minds of tomorrow, even during these times of turbulence, thank you and to our students who have taken our school's motto to heart, embracing challenge as opportunity in doing their best each and every day through truth and courage. Thank you. So while there's no question that this year has been unusual, our students have continued to grow and succeed, to dream big and to learn the skills required to turn those dreams into realities. And there is perhaps no group more successful at realizing their aspirations than tonight's guests of honor, the class of 2021. This remarkable group of caring leaders is impressive on many fronts. Not only has this talented group earned over 1.6 million in scholarship offers from post-secondary institutions around the world, but they've also made meaningful contributions to the school and to the greater community. During their four years at the senior school, they have completed 8,053 hours of service, with 2,243 of those hours occurring during their grade 12 year in a pandemic. This is impressive. <laughs> now, graduates, I want to take an opportunity to talk to you about connection. I'll be brief. We talked about this at the alumni lunch. Because connection is something that I think we do well as a school and as a community. Take a look around and take a moment, just a moment, to think about the faces around you. So I want you to do this. So if you look to your left, I can see you started doing it. Look to your right. Look behind you and in front of you. When was the first time that you connected with these faces? Just think about that. Was it four years ago, at the beginning of grade nine? 
Was it during your time in the middle school? Was it here in Denford Hall or on the turf or in a classroom? Or was it back in junior kindergarten at the beach? Now, I want you to think about all the experiences that you've shared with these faces. Whether you were in a classroom or on a field trip or in a virtual meet or in the dining hall. Think about all the moments between the first time you saw each other and today. Think about all the laughter and all the excitement and the joy, even the sadness you've experienced together. Each of those interactions, every single one of those moments is a connection. And when you think about them together, that's an experience. Now, I'm probably not the first to tell you this, but beginning today, your life is about to change in all sorts of ways. In September, you'll be off on your next adventure. Some of you will be taking the next step together, but some of you may be setting off on your own. You'll be charting a new course, and many of the faces you've come to know and depend on during your time at GNS will be elsewhere. But here's the thing you won't actually be alone at all. Because the connections that you share, the bonds that you forged over late nights of study or games, on the, games in the gym or walks at lunchtime, those connections endure. Now, there's no question they'll be different. You may not be able to go for a drive or a meet at the park or at the beach. But the people you've come to rely on over all these years will always be nearby. It could be a text, a FaceTime, or dare I say it, even an old-fashioned phone call. They'll be there when you need a supportive ear or a word of encouragement. They'll be there for you because you will be there for them. Because like all communication, connection doesn't work if it's only one way. It needs to be reciprocated. And when it is, those bonds become unbreakable. I also want to remind you that the connections you share aren't only with each other. They're shared with your parents and your parents' friends and your teachers and your school. The circle of people who believe in you are here, and they're here to support you. Much larger as a community than you may even realize. And everyone, every single one of us, believes in your individual and collective ability to change the world. We know that you're ready for the challenges that the next steps will undoubtedly bring to try new things and to take new risks, because you've been taking risk and trying new things for years. That's not new but you're ready for more than just the next year or the next four years. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you'll do it with the knowledge that a community of friends and family are behind you every step of the way, seeing you for you. I'm so excited to see the roads that this group before me decide to travel. But before you embark into places unknown for adventures unimagined, one final thought. We talk a lot at GNS about seizing the moment and embracing challenge as opportunity. And I know that you're ready to do just that. But there's another type of opportunity that I hope you'll also pursue with the same sense of determination that you've pursued every day of your time here on campus. The type of opportunity that you create for yourself. I want you to look at the world and at your place within it and then to challenge yourself to make the world better. I want you to imagine how the world today can be better tomorrow and what you need to do to affect that change. I know that you can do it. More importantly, you know you can do it. The class of 2021, I congratulate you for reaching this milestone. You are truly rock stars. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holtam. Before we begin the awards portion, we would like to explain a few logistics. If you receive an award, please come up to the stage from the far side, from away from me. Take your time when you come down, having a gown on, and watch your step as you get there. When you come up, if you could stand on the marked X on the far side of the table from me and you'll receive your award and pause while your photograph is taken by a photographer. Some awards will be presented by, by your teachers, and if this is the case, please leave your mask on until they step aside, and then you can pose for a photo without your mask. If there is no one in the photo with you to begin, then please remove your mask once you reach the stage. After the photo, 
please take the time to put on your mask before returning to your seat. Don't forget to take the prize with you, but you have to leave the trophy. Now take your time, we'll wait for you. It's not a race. The photos of all award winners will be available through our photographer's website later in the summer, and today's ceremony is also being filmed by Lumera Productions, and a copy can be obtained by visiting their website as well. Please see the online program for more information. The program can be found on the same website page where you have accessed the live stream. Now before we're getting into the awards, let's take a moment to remember some of the moments throughout the years that our grads spent at GNS with a slideshow. We will begin our presentation of awards with the Grade 12 Subject Award winners. The Grade 12 Subject Awards are given for not only scholastic excellence, but also for effort and a dedication to the subject. I will ask the head of each department to present the, these awards. With the head of the Language Acquisition Department, Madame Andrea Harris, please join me on stage to present the first of our subject awards. The Language Acquisition Awards are presented to the students who demonstrate a passion for their st studies in language and culture. They consistently use Mandarin, French, or Spanish to communicate and strive to take risks with the language to improve their knowledge. The Greenwood Shield for French is awarded to Akira Kudo.
the El Premio de Christine Horodisky Prize for Spanish 12 to Katrina Way. For Ab Initio Spanish, we would also like to acknowledge Stephanie Chen. <laughs> Finally, the award for Mandarin 12 goes to Jelena Ko. Congratulations to our Language Prize winners, and thank you to Madame Harris. Would Mr. Pat Giomi, head of the Mathematics Department, please assist with the next awards. In IB Mathematics 12 HL, Ella Lee. In IB Mathematics 12 SL, Jacob McIntyre. And in pre-calculus 12, Stella Fraser. Congratulations to our math award winners. Thank you, Mr. Jomi. Would Mr. Robert Marthaler, head of our language and literature department, please join me. For language and literature 12, Marissa Smith. The Marion Jenkins Literature 12 Award, Stephanie Chen. In Creative Writing 12, Morgan McDonald. And Theory of Knowledge 12, Anders Woodruff. Thank you, Mr. Marthaler. Would Mrs. Rebecca Nielsen, head of our Individuals and Societies Department, please join me now. In Geography 12, Vanessa LaBelle.
For History 12, Andrew Whale. In Economics 12, Marissa Smith. In Social Justice 12, Hannah Yin. And in Global Politics 12, we are pleased to present the Harrison Company Judith Anderson Memorial Scholarship to Gabby McPherson. Thank you, Ms. Nielsen. I would now ask Ms. Erin Dallin, Head of the Sciences and Design Department, to come forward. The Dr. Masanori Aoki Memorial Award was donated by Yan Aoki, a GNS graduate in the class of 2000, in memory of his late father, who was a well-known and highly respected research engineer in Japan. The award has three categories, Chemistry 12, Physics 12, and Biology 12. In Chemistry 12, Connor Boisenberg. For Biology 12, Sophie Van Kallenberg. In Physics 12, Tara Galanka. And the all-around top sciences student goes to Stephanie Chen. Please join me in congratulating the science award winners.
Thank you to Ms. Stalin, and congratulations to all of our grade 12 subject award winners. We are proud of all of our grads and their academic achievements. I would now like to invite Mr. Steve Thompson, head of the Arts Department to the stage, to acknowledge the outstanding work in band, choir, theater, and visual arts. He's also joined by members of the Arts Department. Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Palm. Before I begin the Arts Award uh, presentations, I am pleased to welcome the choir to the stage to perform Bye Bye Blackbird with Tallulah Tam on piano, followed by a solo of Go the Distance performed by Akira Kudo with Alexis on piano. See my face, and a voice keeps saying. 
Thank you to the choir and to Akira. That was brilliant. And Alexis, well done. We will begin with our theater awards. I would like to welcome Ms. Adrian Smook to the stage. The Colin Skinner Award is offered to a student who excels in acting, directing, and or writing. This year's recipient of the Colin Skinner Award is Fiona Morakal. The Judy Trelore Passion for Theater Award is given to a student who has shown a passionate commitment to the theater department in and out of class and on and off the stage. The 2021 winner is Say Sturks. Thank you, Ms. Smook. We will now move on to a, our choral awards, joined by Ms. Amanda Cheval. The Gross Family Choral Award for Musicianship and Leadership recognizes outstanding achievement in the choral program, including the ability to lead a section vocally and perform as a soloist. We are pleased to recognize Akira Kudo. Thank you, Ms. Cheval. We will now recognize an award recipient in visual arts, joined by Ms. Gina Seacott. <laughs> the Award for Excellence in Visual Arts is presented to a grade 12 student who consistently demonstrates tenacity in his or her creative pursuits in the visual arts. This year's recipient is Julia Giomi. Thank you, Ms. Seacott. I will now present the awards in band. The Senior Concert Band Award is awarded to a student who shows leadership and skill in band and who has shown commitment and excellence. Congratulations to this year's winner, Tara Galanka. The Audrey Bailey Senior Jazz Band Award is presented to a grade 12 student who has demonstrated excellence in jazz band. This award provides a scholarship courtesy of Mrs. Audrey Bailey, the founder of the GNS Band program. This year's winner of the Audrey Bailey Senior Jazz Band Award is Anders Woodruff.
And while we've got Anders on stage, I will also thrilled to announce that he is being presented with an additional award as he won Outstanding Senior Trombone at the West Coast Jazz Festival this year. Well done, Anders. I am now thrilled to announce our top award in the arts. The Peggy Walton Packard Award recognizes a student who exemplifies excellence in the arts and is awarded to a student capable of going on in multiple arts. And the 2021 winner is Erica Patrick. As we conclude the Arts Awards, I'd like to present In My Life by the Beatles, performed by Ms. Drury, Mr. Henry, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Lundgren, and myself. Thank you, Mr. Thompson, and all the arts department. Would Madame Gerard, our IB Diploma Coordinator, please join us on stage. Service has always played an important role of who we are and what we do at GNS, and this has never been more true than over the past few months, in fact, the past year and a half. What is meaningful service? As Jackie de Cormier said, 
Service is feeling the work you do is significant and has a positive and important impact on the person, populations, or cause you are working with. It is sharing a part of yourself, either through a skill or passion, with another person for a mutual good. Our graduating class has done this in spades over their time at the school through our services action and CAS programs. I just wanted to give them a round of applause for that. In addition to their successes in academics and service, our grads have earned recognition through their university acceptances and scholarships. Specifically, a number of our grads have earned Ministry of Education District Authority Scholarships. These $1,250 scholarships are awarded to students for excellence in non-academic fields and are meant to assist in tuition for furthering a student's post-secondary education. The scholarship is very competitive, and all those that applied this year under unique circumstances demonstrated talent and risk-taking. The following students are recognized as recipients of 2021 Ministry of Education District Authority Scholarships. When I call your name, please assemble on stage for a group photo. For creative writing, Morgan McDonald. Debate and public speaking, Marissa Smith. For leadership, Ava Dryden, Alex Finn, there's a bit of a list, Alex Finn, Sophie Van Kylenborg, Corin Wallace, and Hannah Yin. In Model United Nations, Model Commonwealth, Gabby McPherson. Performance in Sport, Team, Tara Galanka and Brooke Taylor. And in Second Language, Spanish, or as Senor Reeves and Senora Molini would say, Espanol, Vanessa Leibel. Congratulations to all of our District Authority Scholarship winners. I now invite Mr. Damon Henry, Middle School Principal, to announce our next award recipients. Thank you, Madam Gerard. Uh, the Round Square King Constantine Medal is given to a student who has demonstrated dedication to the ideals of the Round Square. This year's winner is Tar Galanka. The Friedman Trophy is given to a grade 12 student for consistently doing their personal best. Congratulations to this year's recipient of the Friedman Trophy, Akira Kudo. <laughs> The Burridge Cup recognizes a grade 12 student who demonstrates outstanding strength in leadership, the ability to organize intelligently, and who shows personal charisma, attracting others to follow their example. Please congratulate Gabby McPherson. <laughs> The
the Simpson Bowl is given to recognize a grade 12 student with an outstanding degree of selflessness, indicated by a strong desire to serve the community as a whole. This year we congratulate Rhea Gandhi. And I would now like to invite Ms. Jean Bigelow, junior school principal, to continue our awards presentations. Thank you, Mr. Henry. The FUMA Award, <clears throat> excuse me, the FUMA Award is for the grade 12 student who defines individuality and is someone who is not afraid to stand out in a crowd. We recognize Luca Gaffney. The Anne Lindsay Selwood Memorial Prize is given to acknowledge a loyal and supportive grade 12 student who over a period of time has displayed a quiet but steady concern for others. Our winner for 2021 is Connor Bosenberg. The Monica Fisi Scholarship Award is awarded to a graduating student who is a loyal, enthusiastic citizen, caring of the community, and a strong contributor to our programs, whose good nature brightens the lives of his or her friends and teachers. Today, we recognize Dana Mavro. The Ginny Deemer Book Prize recognizes a grade 12 student for holistic scholarship, including effort, principles, above average achievement, peer support, leadership, love of learning, respect, and citizenship. We congratulate Shreya Gandhi. Before continuing with our awards, I would like to introduce a video of a performance by the Senior School Jazz Orchestra. Following this, Mr. Cole Carlson, Deputy Head of School, will continue our award presentations.
Thank you, Mrs. Bigelow, and a special thank you to the Jazz Orchestra. The following two students have achieved the top academic averages in the grade 12 class. Receiving the book prize is Ella Lee. The Austin Lee Bowl is presented to the grade 12 student with the top academic average. Everyone, please join me in acknowledging the academic accomplishments of Stephanie Chen. The Emer Galt Award is presented to a student that has contributed significantly and meaningfully to service, either within GNS or in the community during their time here at GNS. We are pleased to present this award to Hannah Yin. The recipient of the Governor General's Medal, recognizing the student achieving the top academic average, inclusive of all grade 11 and 12 courses, will be presented at a later date once the final results have been tabulated. The Governor's Trophy was donated in honor of the governors of Glen Lyon School and Norfolk House School, whose dedication and vision culminated in the amalgamation of the two schools on March 5th of 1986. Awarded equally to two grade 12 students who, in the opinion of their classmates and the Pemberton Woods staff, have, through perseverance and effort, contributed most meaningfully to the school. Both students will have significant achievements to their credit during their senior years in most, if not all, of the following areas. Academics, the arts, athletics, and citizenship. The awards are decided by a secret ballot of staff and graduating students the recipients must have attended the school for at least two years. This year's recipients are Corin Wallace and Ava Dryden. The Griffin Award is given to members of the graduating class who are considered to have given some outstanding service to the school, or through their own personal growth at Glenline Norfolk School, to have exemplified such qualities as human kindness or tenacity in the face of challenge without seeking recognition or reward. The Griffin Award for 2021 is awarded to, and there are a few, Alex Finn, Leo Huang, Fimbar Sweeney, Brooke Taylor, and Sophie Van Cullenburg. Could they please join me on stage? Congratulations, students, and to all of our graduates here this evening. Mr. Palm will now present the next awards. Would he please come forward?
The head prefects serve to bring a voice to the students, increase camaraderie between grades, and act as student leaders. I would like to present the Hammond Trophy to Ava Dryden and the Hamilton Trophy to Corin Wallace for their unbelievable contributions this year. Come on up, you two. And Cora and Ava, you guys have you guys have your award. You have to, you present now too. Okay, <laughs> thank you. One of the best parts of being a prefect is getting a chance to work with students to make their school experience one to remember. This cannot be done without the contributions of others. Ten years ago, the head prefects began an award called the Griffin of the Year. It is to recognize a quiet leader, someone who works behind the scenes and is always willing to help, no matter what needs to be done. The winner of the Griffin of the Year for 2020-2021 is Stephanie Chen. Thank you, Ava and Corin. All our award presenters and all our award winners, if we get one, one more hand for all, all, the, all of our people. Thank you. Before we turn to our individual grads, I have a few remarks I would like to make. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, members of the board, invited guests, staff, our greater GNS community, and of course, our graduates. It's been a remarkable year in the senior school, one that has been challenging and has demanded adaptability, patience, and positivity. And at the same time, through truth and courage and with care, it has been a remarkably successful one too. In fact, this group of graduates has mirrored these characteristics perfectly. Throughout the year at assemblies and other events, we have acknowledged the progress and achievement of them all. We are very proud of their accomplishments, most especially in the way they care and support each other in their quest to do their very best, no matter if they need to follow those dreaded arrows and walk a very long way to their next class. As I mentioned at our senior school closing ceremony last Wednesday, under normal circumstances, a successful school year only occurs with a concerted and coordinated effort of everyone in the community. And with a year we have just had, the GNS community has been a wonderful example of how a group of people can overcome any challenge. I wanted to repeat my thank yous and take a moment to acknowledge those groups and how they contributed to this year's success so that our grads and their families can show their appreciation. To our senior school families, especially our grade 12 families, thank you for supporting your children over all of their years in so many ways to be able to commit to and be successful in a myriad of activities and opportunities. I know this year was particularly hard with their protocols not allowing you to be on campus most of the time, especially in your children's grad year. That being said, you continue to be wonderfully supportive parents and partners, always willing to help us find the best way forward to support your children's learning. I wanted to particularly thank all the volunteers who provide so much to our community and over the number of years as well. At lunch times in the cafeteria, helping support our athletics, debates and other events that have happened online this year. Our grade 12 rep, Linnea Turnquist, and the list goes on. The leadership by our parents auxiliary co-chairs, Claudia Bloom and Lisa Sacklis, set a wonderful example for all of us with their involvement, organization, and Griffin spirit for every facet of the school. On behalf of all of us, thank you. <laughs> to our board of governors that are here today or are watching, 
Please thank you for your steady guidance and your clear long-term vision of the school. The plans for the, for the future are very exciting. <laughs> to our support staff, thank you for your dedication and commitment and professionalism and never-ending energy as you provide those essential and framework and support that allows the school to run so smoothly. As I said in the senior school closing, I believe this group represents the unsung heroes during the pandemic having to ensure elements of our safety every single day. And as we changed, and as the protocols switched, so did they in responding to new and, and different um, elements. On behalf of all and everyone here, we thank you. I will address our graduates in a moment. Do not worry, you have not been forgotten. To our senior school teaching staff, each year, your energy, wisdom, commitment, and dedication shines through daily. The level of excellence of which you demand of yourselves each day in order to support, encourage, and develop each student's learning and character is inspiring. This occurs not only in the classroom, obviously, but also through your roles as coaches and sponsors and coordinators of so many activities designed to provide our students with a myriad of opportunities. This past year with protocols and processes focused on ensuring safety has challenged your creativity, your positivity, and your collaboration, and in some cases ran completely opposite of best practice. And yet, you were still able to create such strong and lasting relationships with students and model perseverance and an excellent example of lifelong learning. It is a privilege to work with you all. And on behalf of the grad class and their families, we are deeply, deeply grateful. <laughs> Particularly to those staff members who will be departing GNS or taking a one year leave of absence, we would like to say farewell. At our senior school closing on Wednesday, I took the time to acknowledge these people, but again, I wish our grade 12s to have the opportunity to show their, uh, their farewell and also their acknowledgement. Madame Andrea Harris will be taking a year's leave beginning in June. She's looking forward to a year full of reflection and opportunities that come with not being at school every day. We will certainly miss her presence as a wonderful collaborative colleague, gifted educator and leader, supportive home form advisor, and involved in a myriad of activities, including SEC. Madame Harris, we wish you well in your year away and the opportunities it affords. And as she says, we might see her a few days as a TOC too. <laughs> we are sad to share the news that Ms. Jennifer Brown will be leaving us at the end of the school year. Mrs. Brown has been such a great addition to our senior school office team. Her friendly, welcoming, and supportive nature is so appreciated. And we are grateful to her for everything she brings to work each day. She wishes to express how much her time here has been a joy and that she will be forever grateful for this experience. Jen feels very lucky to have come back to a place she enjoyed so much as a student. We wish her nothing but the very best and we'll look for her at alumni events in the future. We say farewell to Mr. Jason Lee, who has been at GNS for the past two years. Initially as a member of our learning strategies team, and part of the middle school, he has then moved over this year to our math department and the senior school. Throughout his time here, the constant, pun intended, is his wonderful connections to students and colleagues, his caring demeanor, and his involvement in co-curriculars as a coach or sponsor. Mr. Lee will be moving to Vancouver to be closer to family and will be teaching math at Fraser Academy. Mr. Lee has that unique ability as a teacher to support his students, but still demand the best in them, and we wish him all the very best in his future. <laughs> After taking a year's leave of absence, Ms. Annie Valence has decided she will not be returning to GNS. As a student and a teacher at GNS, she attended every school day for a total of 22 years. With her mom and aunts all attending Norfolk House and her daughters attending school, while both herself and her mom worked at the school has made her uniquely connected to GNS. We will miss her positive energy, wise perspective, collaborative spirit, and leadership. 
She's excited to continue to find new and different challenges and opportunities in education beyond GNS's walls. We wish her the very best in her future and know she will continue to be connected to GNS in so many ways. After an astounding 55-year connection to GNS, Mrs. Jean Bigelow will be retiring this year. While her current role is leading the beach at the junior school, uh, sorry, at the beach at the junior school principal, she has held a number of other roles across the school. These include middle school principal, director of student life and senior school, learning strategies teacher, learning strategies head of department, outweek trip coordinator, and teacher of English, art, social studies, career and personal planning, and even the choir organizer. Quite the list, isn't it? As one particular staff member remarked, she has also had the best office an educator can have in Canada with the beautiful sunroom at Rattenbury House, but also maybe the least appealing one while working at PW. Hint, it's not an office any longer. On a personal note, I have appreciated working closely with her and her collaborative spirit, gaining her wisdom and always honest perspective along with her absolutely unrivaled can-do attitude. They say the measure of a person is the positive influence you can have on others. Just think about the number of people Jean has touched through her 55 years at GNS, and you have a glimpse into the amazing career she has enjoyed and the legacy she has left. On behalf of everyone connected with the senior school, particularly our grad class and their parents, we wish you the very best in your retirement, Jean, and congratulate you on an astounding GNS career. And now to the grads of 2021. Five years ago, when I arrived at GNS, many of you were in grade eight, the leaders in the middle school. But after that first year, I felt like you were the first group I was really able to welcome into the senior school. I have so many vivid memories of this group. I was fortunate to be able to teach some of them in their grade 10 year with career life education. I fondly remember the big circular table group. Perhaps not for their academic acumen, but rather their ability to be social, funny, supportive of one another, and to consistently ask if they could listen to music. They were some, there were some epic playlists created, I think. As a year begins, I'm constantly on the lookout for signs to help me ultimately make this address to the group. Finding a theme to help acknowledge and share what I hope is the positive legacy you leave us all through your time here at GNS. For some of you, that represents 14 years from JK through to grade 12. There were quite a few ideas that I jotted down throughout the first few months and I was feeling encouraged and a little less worried looking to today. And then on January 20th of this year, and a few days after, I received two separate inspirational moments that I feel encapsulate this unique and special group of people. On January 20th, does anyone recall the significance of this date? It was the inauguration of US President Joseph R. Biden. While this day was significant for many reasons, amongst them having to deal with the challenges of political turmoil, the storming of the Capitol, and safety measures needed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the spark that I took was when a young poet, Amanda Gorman, not very much older than you, took the stage and delivered the spoken word poem, The Hill We Climb. If you have not had a chance to hear this, I encourage you to listen to it. The beginning of the poem and the end of the poem is what I'd like to share today. She began, when the day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. Immediately, I think of the shade that the pandemic thrust upon us all. The concerns and questions it brought, the losses, and certainly a sea to cross as a challenge. Her speech continues and touches on many truths she felt needed to be spoken, some not always easy to hear, but also the encouraging characteristics of people and the power they each have to enact change. The end of the poem answers her question she begins with, and as I listened, this grad class immediately came to mind. When day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light 
If only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. Throughout this year, and certainly as long as I have known you as a group, you have been the light for us. And as Amanda Gorman explains, it is because you are brave enough to both see the effect of the light, but also brave enough to be the light. This representation of you is something I have been reminded of since that day. And today, as I stand here in front of you, it makes me smile thinking of you all in this way. And then a few days after listening to this brilliant first ever Youth Poet Laureate, I was reading an educational blog from George Koros, a Canadian educator and author, and I had a second aha moment. Here's what he said. Education is about elevation, not only of our students, but one another. Everything we do to create better opportunities for those we serve should be cheered on and learned from. We all bring different strengths, passions, and talents to our classrooms, and utilizing them to provide great but varied experiences is beneficial to learning. This isn't only true for education. It really is about how we can live our life. And I was again struck by how closely this described not only each of you individually, but also as a group. I immediately thought of elevating like a tide raising all boats and you are this powerful, positive tide that wherever you are sweeps through the school or an event you are participating in and just makes it better. In fact, I would challenge that you are as powerful as that tide in the Bay of Bundy, the highest in the world at 16 meters. You are all the light that shines through the darkness, but also able to elevate those around you. How do you do this? My speech isn't allowed to be that long, actually. But you know, if you ask anyone connected to the school that has had an opportunity to interact with you all, they will have a story about this. They will have many of them. For example, during our senior school closing, Ms. Smook shared this slide with us all. This represents all of the organizations that the senior school students provided service to. It is awesome, and you were the leaders of much of it. I am certain that many of these organizations and people will talk about the light you were and the way you elevated the importance of their work and the people they support. Or maybe it was an assembly period that Hannah organized as our cultural prefect. For this hour, the grade 12s were completely engaged in modeling fun and inclusiveness and how it was okay to relax a bit and not be concerned about academic deadlines or IAs. The joy I witnessed emanating from you all was infectious. Or perhaps it was literally the hundreds of times this year where each of you led in your activities, athletics and clubs, how you mentored younger students in debate, model United Nations, math, science, pride and equality, sports of all kinds, field hockey, soccer, rugby, tennis, badminton, basketball, volleyball, ultimate, in drama, theater, visual art, band and choir. The smiles that were ever present the care that was always present. These students leaving this, the activity feeling empowered, supported, and inspired by you all. Finally, it is an example you set in how you interact with one another. Norfolk House's motto was, do thy best and rejoice in those who do better. For 30 years, I have been involved with grade 12 classes, and there have been some amazing groups but I have never seen one that truly saw every member of their group as different and important. The way you see this as a sign to lean in and learn about each other rather than a way to divide is wonderful. My lasting memory here was every one of you showing up after a night of the Griffin and playing games together like foxes and hounds and capture the flag and Bramley ball. If I could ask each of you to take this perspective and share it with the next group you become part of, we will all be the richer for it. I want to finish here. But to be honest, I don't quite know how. I think it's because I don't want it to finish. Because we'll all miss you too much. But here are two thoughts for you. The first is from the Fab Four, the Beatles, and their song, Here Comes the Sun. That's you. That's you all as you've been a part of GNS. And as they say, it's all right. <laughs> and finally, a poem titled The Bridge Builder. Now I won't read the whole poem. Your grad class represents the old man having the experience of GNS, 
you aren't just thinking about leaving. As the old man states, good friend, in the path I have come, he said, there followed after me today a youth whose feet must pass this way. This chasm that I have been as not to me, to that fair-haired youth, a pitfall may be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. Good friend, I am building this bridge for him. Genus grad class of 2021, leaders that are brave enough to be the light, that elevate those around them as a powerful positive tide, and look back to ensure that those that come another day will be supported. I am confident you have, and you will continue to make a true difference in the world. We are proud of you, Griffins, and have learned so much from all of you. Do your best through truth and courage. Thank you. We are now going to move to the part of the ceremony where we celebrate each of our amazing members of our graduating class. Our readers this year are Mr. Darren Brown, Madame Andrea Harris, Ms. Ali Dirksen, and to begin, Ms. Rebecca Nielsen. I welcome Mr. Chad Holtham to the stage to present the grade 12 certificates. A photo of your graduate with Mr. Holtham presenting their certificate will be mailed to you in the summer. And without further ado, our grade 12s. Good evening, everyone. I'm delighted to be the first speaker to present this unbelievable grad class. Sahil Badwan. Arriving at GNS in grade six, Sahil, or CC, as his friends call him, has fond memories of Camp David, frolicking at the beach, playing rugby, and chilling in the library with his friends. Don't let Sahil's laid back nature fool you. He is fierce and decisive when it's time to buy a new pair of shoes. His collection currently exceeds 10 pairs and counting. As Sahil takes his next steps on his future path, we know he'll have the right footwear to get him where he needs to go. We wish him all the best as he heads to the University of Victoria to study business. Stephanie Borisov. What do Bulgarian traditional dancing, rowing, and a wicked sense of humor have in common? Stephanie Borisov. Did you also know that she is basically sunshine in human form? She is incredibly humble, so you may not know these things, as she is definitely not one to brag. From chatting in the library to spending time in her classes, her friends are what Stephanie loves most about her time at GNS. And they would be quick to say the same about her. Academic, activist, and adventurer, Stephanie is excited to explore the world and bring her positivity to every place she visits. Next year, Stephanie will be attending the University of Victoria to study computer science. <laughs> Connor Bosenberg. C for coffee, B for bikes. One of his first accolades was a master's degree in recess, digging holes at the beach, and only playing soccer as an excuse to slide around in the mud. This chaos led to adventures at the big campus with his first foray into chemistry, mistaking peroxide for milk. Hmm, is that why he won the chemistry award? <laughs> Adult Connor developed in the senior school with his monk-like discipline, arising each morning at 5.30 a.m. with a precisely prepared espresso in hand and homework strewn across the table. Connor will miss his classmates, whom he considers the best reason for having attended GNS. We will miss Connor as he heads to the University of British Columbia to study engineering. <laughs> Anne. 
Annie Burridge. Human rights advocate, brave knight, and compelling singer, Annie's time at GNS speaks to her ability to create community and connect with those around her. A regular in the Learning Commons and on the stage, Annie has never missed a production or a musical all through senior school. She is a delightful human with an even keel, and even in the most stressful situations, Annie never fails to make people smile. Annie would like to give a special shout out to her twin brother, William, who graduated last week. Next year, Annie will be studying early childhood studies at Ryerson University, and we have no doubt she will finger knit her way into everyone's hearts. <laughs> Damien Chapman. Damien, or Damo to his friends, has been found on or around a GNS basketball court since grade three at the beach. While he will always have fond memories of his time on the senior boys basketball team and hanging out in the library, Damien is also searching for someone to replace him as the official director of marker management in the art room. The other student artists will definitely miss his impromptu one-man dance parties at the back of the room. No surprise to us, next year, Damien will pursue studies in music production. The next graduate is Stephanie Chen, and I told her that I would wave. Hi, Stephanie, we miss you. When asked for her favorite memories at GNS, Stephanie responded, stage managing productions with the tech crew, chasing after Frisbees with the ultimate team, and laughing so hard with her friends. We will all remember her kindness, generosity, and her determination to write every single IB practice exam ever made. <laughs> Stephanie would like to thank her teachers, her friends, and her host family, who helped her thrive in IB and survive being homesick. She plans to attend the University of California, Berkeley, next year for a program in biochemistry and molecular biology, working towards her dream career in medicine. Best of luck, Stephanie. Francesca Cumberbirch. Francesca's favorite memories from GNS consist of seeing how late she can come to school without missing attendance, winning gotcha, and of course, design 10. In 10 years, this adventurer hopes to be living in England, surrounded by tea and British accents. The next chapter begins at UVic in September, studying psychology, and includes a plan to go on exchange to the University of Manchester. A cherished lifer, Francesca will look back on her time at GNS fondly, remembering her close friendships and moments filled with laughter. Her infectiously bright personality will be dearly missed. Madison Davitz. Known for her high energy, welcoming smile, and ability to rally the troops into doing just about anything, Maddie will be leaving big shoes to fill in the Dirksen home form. As a lifer, it's hard to choose her favorite memories, but Camp David, Basketball Provincials, and Whip War at the beach campus rank high on the list. Known for having an entourage of supportive family at every event, Maddie herself is always a huge supporter of her peers and can often be heard yelling, yes, queen, as she cheers them on. Next year, Maddie will study business at the University of Victoria. <laughs> Says Dirks. Says, not to be confused with seize, cheese, cease, or seize. 
arrived in GNS in grade nine and headed straight to the theater where he has been ever since. From narrator number 12 to the Black Knight, Says emerged from the curtain ready to box step, appearing in every production on the GNS stage. Guitar on his back, next year he is heading to the Netherlands to travel, work, and eat war fries. Says' future plans include making, playing, and selling guitars, probably while listening to classic rock. We wouldn't be surprised if he started his own theater company, specializing in avant-garde surrealist theater. Parker Dix. True Grit is the title of Parker's biography to date. In language and literature class, having memorized his 10-minute oral assessment so thoroughly, he delivered it with his eyes shut, not missing a single beat. On the basketball court, the football gridiron, or the academic classroom, Dixie has achieved his goals one play at a time. Though leaving in grade 10 to pursue football at Mount Doug, our prodigal son returned because GNS is in his heart. And also, the football players were really big. <laughs> Next year, Parker will attend Camosun College to pursue their sports management program. <laughs> Toe Doan. Toe joined GNS in grade 10 by way of Vietnam and has brightened our school with her joyful smile and ukulele playing ever since adventurer, traveler, and unafraid of a challenge, this lovely human found community here through Culture Club, Tech Club, and on stage in Mary Poppins. Toe is proud to have survived HL math and, less harshly, a frigid Edmonton winter. Upon graduation, Toe will take her logical and creative skills to pursue computer science at U of T Mississauga. Toe will miss her friends and is grateful for the opportunity to have made GNS and Victoria her home away from home. <laughs> Ava Dryden. In seven years at GNS, this dynamic head prefect has done it all played on more sports teams, been involved in more activities, and served on more committees than just about anybody else. This baker of mug cakes and chocolate chip cookies is a force, but in the best possible way. With memories of Mun, service trips to Costa Rica and India, Ava has done it all with a smile and a jump in her step. Next year, Ava plans to head to McMaster University to study science with the longer-term goal of heading to medical school. <laughs> Sophie Dunkley. Our soft-spoken Sophie screams fashion and art in every handmade blouse, vibrant canvas, custom birthday card, and note side doodle. Don't let the nickname Slofi fool you. She believes double blocks were made for skateboarding, evenings are for volunteer councils, and weekends are for thrifting. Sophie is the secret shopper behind her friend's best looks and the builder of a Danny DeVito shrine in the girls' bathroom. The world will see her shine in either film costume design or law. Her teachers, friends, and Cobb's bread will miss Sophie as she heads off to Ryerson University for Creative Industries. <laughs> Connor Elliott. Connor's motto is, why use words to convey meaning when a wry grin says it all? 
though he never joined the school choir, his musical talent was on display as he, as well as the rest of the basketball team, regaled Corin with a rendition of O Canada after Mr. Wallace received his Canadian citizenship. Connor's favorite memory is the grade 11 basketball provincials because of the, te the team's excellent gameplay and the Olive Garden server who called Mr. Thoreau bro throughout dinner. <laughs> Next year, Connor will study engineering at the University of British Columbia, thus putting that personal project experience of building a gaming computer to excellent use. <laughs> Ian Ferguson. Did you feel it? The ground trembled. Dust falling from the ceiling. Pictures are falling off the walls. It's not an earthquake. It's the force of nature. That is Ian Ferguson. Standing at six, free, six foot three, Ian has had this effect ever since his arrival at GNS in grade five. No mandatory mask muffles his voice. As games captain, he can be heard fearlessly leading the basketball team or theorizing in Mr. Irvin's physics class. What began as a childhood interest in airplanes is now a reality. Ian thanks his teachers who patiently marked every single assignment, wait for it, on airplanes. Ian will be flying off to Ryerson University to pursue aerospace engineering and aviation technology. Alexandra Finn. Alex can always be counted on to look the bright side of life. She is someone who is passionate and caring, as shown through her work as the service prefect. Alex embodies the quality of a leader with her simple acts of kindness, like holding the door with a smile on her face or waving in the hallway to each person she sees. She will be remembered for her bad dad biology jokes, her coffee addiction, and stress baking. Alex will pursue health sciences at Queen's University, where we are sure she will continue to wave her magic wand of positivity. Stella Fraser. Stella is a BC girl through and through. Whether that be rowing on Elk Lake at 6 a.m. and then again at 6 p.m., hiking the Juan de Fuca Trail, or forcing your friends to go on quarantine walks, she loves the great outdoors. We will miss Stella's dry but hilarious sense of humor, her upbeat spirit, even in math class, and of course, her friendly hellos as she lugged her many rowing bags through the halls. Our fierce West Coast trike racer will continue yanking chain at the University of British Columbia, where she will pursue a degree in the arts. <laughs> Luca Gaffney. Known for great socks and noisy shoes, Luca is the guy who always looks and sounds genuinely happy to be at GNS. Luca debates eloquently, but he does so while actively moving. He says this is so his arguments become less of a speech and more of an entertaining dinner theater. Having been there for four years, it is fitting that an alto sax, fav alto sax player's favorite memory was the Disneyland band trip and Luca will look back fondly at his time with Mr. Giomi and his friends. <laughs> he hopes to pursue a career in business and science, but ultimately, Luca just wants to be happy and do cool things. We will miss his, this gre gregarious soul as he leaves the Griffin nest to study business and economics. Rhea Gandhi. If leprechauns want to find a pot of gold, all they have to do is look inside Rhea's heart. She is the sweetest person in the world until you come between her and that Uno card she wants. 
over her time at GNS, even though she's made some serious life lifestyle changes, hashtag she's a preachy veg vegan, hashtag no appendix, Rhea has maintained her reputation as a bright, bubbly, and compassionate young woman. She has taken this world of science by storm, and we admire her enthusiasm and determination in accomplishing even the most rigorous tasks. We can't wait to see what Rhea accomplishes in her time at the University of British Columbia in the prestigious Science One program. Shreya Gandhi. In the words of one of Shreya's favorite pastimes, BuzzFeed quizzes, Shreya is similar to a snickerdoodle cookie. She's sugar, spice, and everything nice. Since her arrival in grade nine, the balance of her sweet and sassy personality, along with her loyalty and determination, has left quite the mark on the GNS community. Her humility conceals her accomplishments, enthusiastic scientist, innovative researcher, dedicated academic, gifted writer, and well-intentioned pun maker, Mr. Irvin can attest. We will miss her lovely smile as she leaves us to start the Science One program at the University of British Columbia next year, and we'll all be excited to say we knew her when she cures the next global epidemic. <laughs> Julia Giomi. Julia's favorite memories during her eight years at GNS include creating the story of Borbaja, the disobedient child in Spanish 10, playing at the beach with Sofia Gladiotis, and staying after school in the art room to do art alone. This is no surprise given her passion for all things art, particularly anime. Art fills her soul and feeds her desire to relax and do what she loves. She plans to attend the Alberta University of the Arts to study illustration, working towards her dream career as a freelance artist with her own little studio. <laughs> Sophia Gladiotis. When Sophia sets her mind to some, on something, stand back, because it will be accomplished. Sophia's classmates comment that she is the momest of their friends with the biggest heart. She instinctively knows what you need before you do. She'll hand you a snack before you even know you're hungry. Thirsty? Here's some water. Need a ride home? No need to ask. Sophia and her squishmallows have already entered the coordinates to your house and her GPS. Sophia will miss her daily walkabouts and check-ins with Miss Drury and is determined to leave Mr. Thoreau and his Tesla in her Mustang's dust as she heads off to the University of Toronto. <laughs> Tara Galanka. Nestle must have based their most famous candy on Tara Galanka because not only is she incredibly sweet, she's also a smarty. <laughs> Tara is known for her ability to succeed in even, the f in, even in the face of adversity known as the IB diploma. Her friends joke that she has several career possibilities, Olympic sailor, renowned economist, acclaimed physician, top tier French horn soloist, or distinguished engineer. Beyond her ability to excel, Tara is witty, energetic, and is always ready to lend a helping hand. We wish this lifer the best of luck as she pursues an engineering degree at the University of Victoria. <laughs> Eva Grosjean. With a plan to study abroad, this physics and mathematics genius took GNS by storm in her grade 10 year and hasn't looked back since. Described by her friends as a fierce leader in the classroom, Eva is someone who genuinely dedicates herself to community and pushes her peers forward through sheer determination and by offering her knowledge and time as a tutor. 
Whether it is in the classroom or on the lake, this dedicated rower never settles and consistently chooses the difficult path towards self-improvement. In the fall, Eva will be attending university back home in Germany, studying electrical engineering and information technology. <laughs> Zoe Hammond. Starting a new school in grade 10 can be tricky, but imagine ending up with a nickname on day one because the umlaut in your name is too difficult for GNS technology to handle. Luckily, Zoa, oops, autocorrect, Zoe is all smiles and up for a good laugh. Zoe will cherish her memories at basketball provincials and will miss late night basketball practices, coaching middle school basketball, and her friends. She apologizes to anyone that experienced the rancid smell resulting from her bio-IA left in the lab fridge. In the fall, Zoe will study life sciences at McMaster University. <laughs> Dylan Hempel Tirio. A lifer, Dylan fondly remembers spending time at the beach and at the junior campus, where Mr. Eagle remarked, and I quote, all year long he demonstrated his love of learning and bottomless passion for anything and everything at school. More recent highlights include his friends and playing sports in the gym and on the turf. According to his friends, it's true that he's good at math, but he's even better at procrastinating. Dylan will study computer science at UVic and one day hopes to become a game developer. <laughs> Leo Huang. Everyone needs a little Leo in their life. Why? Because Leo is the sweetest, one-of-a-kind friend anyone could ask for. He is genuine, supportive, loyal, and the most amazing listener. If he is your friend, then you are super lucky. When asked to poke fun at someone on TikTok, Leo said, I just don't think about people in that sort of negative way. But apart from being sugar, he is all spice on the basketball court and is the team's best defensive player. This leader in sports will take his energetic, optimistic, and contagious smile with him to McMaster University to study social sciences, then travel the world building social connections. <laughs> Liam Hughes. Liam is an original. In five years at GNS, he has definitely marched to the beat of his own drum. Always upbeat and positive, Liam is a friend to all and one of the nicest, most genuine people you'll ever meet. In home form, his apple pies became legendary and they'll be sadly missed by those who remain behind. Liam has fond memories of all the parties he has hosted over the years and plans next year to head to the University of British Columbia to study psychology. May the sun always shine warmly on your face, Liam. <laughs> Jolina Co. In 10 years, Jolina plans to have her PhD in sciences. She will look back at her time at GNS, reminiscing about chilling with friends and playing badminton after school. One of the sweetest people you will ever meet, Jolina is kind to everyone and everything, including her home form sunflower. She may be quiet, but she is a careful observer and, contagious, and courageously steps in whenever someone needs help. The University of Toronto is fortunate to gain such a dedicated and thoughtful student in their science program this fall. Akira Kudo. As we witnessed this evening, Akira is an amazing singer whose brain is a fountain of knowledge that his classmates draw from readily. 
At GNS, he thoroughly enjoyed physics class, especially Jip Cow, where he attempted to the impossible of solving it all without a formula book. Although best known for his mathematical abilities, Akira's true claim to fame comes from ranking third in Asia for the most, most deaths on a Minecraft server. <laughs> While attending the University of British Columbia for computer science in the fall, Akira plans to train for the game show, The Price is Rice, and to win it big. <laughs> Ella Lee. Ella joined us three years ago. Upon first meeting her, you may find her rather shy, but once you get to know her, you'll find her laugh to be quite infectious. Ella will carry with her fond memories of the round square trip to Peru in grade 10, her amazing and inspiring peers, and the beautiful cherry blossoms. We will remember her as a determined student and lighting operator extraordinaire for our senior school productions and assemblies. We wish Ella all the best as she heads off to Carnegie Mellon University to study chemical engineering. Don't forget your winter gear, Ella. Melissa Lee. Don't be deceived by her quiet appearance. Mel Melissa is strongly opinionated and will be sure to tell you what she thinks about your tastes in TV and music. Quirky, funny, and the self-appointed Langlit peer editor to all, her brutally honest feedback is offered with the greatest kindness. Her most creative moment was when she surprised Miss Riddell with an official IB outline, almost entirely composed of emojis. Melissa swears her future is as a NASCAR driver, given her deeply passionate and entirely true personal connection to her physics IA. But whatever the final destination is, her journey begins next year at the University of Victoria. Thank you, Ms. Dogson. Vanessa Leibel. We are so lucky to have stolen Vanessa away from Calgary in grade seven, as her infectious smile and enthusiastic personality light up the halls of GNS. Vanessa's favorite memories include volleyball tournaments, library laugh attacks, and coming catastrophically close to ending Mr. Irvin's 10-year streak of no student injuries by flinging a boiling cube across the physics lab. A geo-kid through and through, Vanessa hopes to one day be an environmental geographer. Until then, you will find her cruising around the University of British Columbia in her mini en route for food, nutrition, and health, if she doesn't crash into another flower truck before then. Taylor Long. With iced coffee in hand, Taylor is always happy to be here at GNS. She has been a part of our community for 14 years. Her fondest memories are from the beach campus with the grade five bike trip as a highlight. She will miss the cookies and online learning with Mr. Irvin in his watermelon hat with his chickens, dogs and guitar. Taylor will most likely be chilling on a beach somewhere, but in the meantime, she will study social sciences at the University of Victoria. This makes perfect sense for Taylor, as her home form knows that she is extremely friendly, welcoming, and supportive. All the best, Taylor. <laughs> Tracy Lynn. Tracy Lynn is a rock star. We have all loved seeing the quiet and modest Tracy let her hair down, then cut it off, and then let her rhythm fly on the drums on stage. A favorite memory? Christmas breakfast. Probably the only meal she's had without hot sauce. Seriously, hot sauce on all things, even things that were already spicy. Although a musician through and through, and winner of prestigious music awards, 
Tracy is bound for a science career. She will probably own her own biotech company one day after a stint at the University of British Columbia. Columbia sorry. Whatever she does, she will always shine. Wesley Lloyd Kruger. Wesley, governor, the fearless face of several characters in productions, has dazzled the stage. A leader in jazz orchestra and master of the last post on trumpet, Wesley is a man of many talents. He loves Star Wars, Model UN, and dragons. Rumor has it he even asked if he could do his history IA on them. Wes was often in the library, engaged in a battle of wits with Anders, or playing chess with Patrick. From his Scottish accent to his Mr. Thompson Halloween tribute and impression of Mr. Stanley, Wesley is well on his way to conquering the world. We wish him all the best at the University of Victoria studying social sciences. Morgan MacDonald. This fall, stylish Morgan will explore New York City, sitting, sipping yerba mate, playing Led Zeppelin tunes on her bass guitar, Senor Pete, in her cozy dorm just outside Manhattan. Her unwavering organization and wish for fun and happiness for everyone have distinguished her as an amazing grad prefect. She is a kind, warm-hearted, and weird in all the right ways friend who can always be counted on. We know that Morgan's energetic spirit and creativity will shine through as she pursues her studies in writing and music at Sarah Lawrence College with the goal of becoming an arts and culture journalist. <laughs> Gabrielle McPherson. Gibby, Gabs, Gibsters are just some of the nicknames of our incredibly sweet, coffee-loving, and determined Gabby. She is set to knock the socks off everyone at the University of Toronto, studying international relations in the prestigious Monk One program. Gabby rose to stardom while organizing GMUN online. Move over, Antonio Guterres. We will miss her impeccable wit, flair for getting things done, and her immense kindness. Gabby will miss her friends and the strong connections within our community. Winner of the BC Excellence Scholarship, we know she will do great things wherever she goes, and all we have to do is watch in awe. Dana Mavro. Dana, debater, academic, nurturer, actor, a cherished member of our grad class who has too many favorite memories to just pick one. But highlights include debate, ultimate frisbee, and every single senior school theater production. Etched in our memories are Cogsworth, Mrs. Gibbs, and the Lady of the Lake. Calm and collected, Dana has single-handedly taken care of the most verbose group of debaters ever. She was the epitome of positivity even in the most dramatic storm. Now, on to her next adventure in the engineering program at the University of British Columbia. Congratulations. <laughs> Jacob McIntyre. Jacob is a talented fashion icon with hair like Jack Frost. His dedication to always looking put together translates into his extremely hard work. Whether it's becoming a track star, mastering figure state skating, or blowing us away with his singing, Jacob has shown he'll succeed in everything he sets his mind to. Math is Jacob's jam, and he rocks at it always eager to lend a hand to anyone. Next year, Jacob will pack his fancy bags to go to study math at McGill University, 
We hope he enjoys mastering his triple axel on Montreal's frozen lakes and becoming a mathematical sensation. <laughs> Patrick Mahalak. Patrick, Patty, Santa Claus, many have become chess masters. No one has become the master of chess. That may be true, but Patrick is well on his way. In grade 11, he was assigned the manatee as his spirit animal by Miss Chatterton. Slow moving, curious, and deliberate, but this intellectual can turn a classic Shakespearean tragedy into a disturbing high school fan fiction and write exceptional literary analyses of the most vague Atwood cat poems while fueled by cold brewed coffee and Red Bull. This summer, Patrick is off to Carlton, where he will study journalism. <laughs> Rowan Morahan. With an entire pizza as his morning snack, <laughs> Rowan can always be depended upon for his sarcastic wit and stories of training fueled by breakfasts of cold spaghetti or multiple burgers. Do we see a theme here? Rowan's fondest memories of his 13 years at GNS include the crab fighting pits, random conversations in the library, and learning about resonant frequencies during GNS Go. In particular, Rowan will always remember when good old Irvin got the glass to fill glass bottles with water to play the physics rendition of Mary Had a Little Lamb. Accepted to several schools to study engineering, Rowan will be attending the University of Victoria this fall. <laughs> Fiona Morical. <clears throat> with her simultaneously quiet and loud personality, Fiona has always been an amazing friend. If you wanted to find her this year, you just had to look for the sleeping burrito in the corner of the library. From Huckleberry Finn to Chip, from Beauty and the Beast to Patsy and Spamalot, Fiona's energy is rarely constrained. Bishop's University is lucky to have her as she goes to study classics in theater, where her sword fighting skills will make her a tour de force on campus. She consistently embodies the theater mantra, the show must go on. Congratulations. <laughs> Alex Alexander Muller-Klemm. Born in Ottawa, Alex discovered his personality was too big for our nation's capital. So west he came. He crept into our hallowed halls in the seventh grade, making a name for himself with books on mathematics and his freakish height. Soon he found a home on the debate team, making his hot takes heard and talents known through mock epics and epic mocks. Alex's humor was a beacon of light in the dreariest hours of study as he reached his pinnacle by hosting The Price is Rice, Grad 21 edition. He made the right choice by heading to Ryerson next year to embark on a study of sports media. Well done. <laughs> Sabrina Ng. Sabrina quietly infiltrated GNS and our hearts in grade 11. A lover of the freshly baked dining hall cookies, her inquiring mind, coupled with an openness to try new things, has made her a wonderful addition to our community. She fondly remembers the days before the pandemic when she and the volleyball team traveled to Vancouver. She is adored by her homestay family, and we will all miss her very much as she leaves us to attend the University of Alberta to study nutrition and food science. All the best, Sabrina. <laughs> Erica Patrick. 
Be it her role as Lysander on Shakespeare Day, her breathtaking paintings hanging in Upper Simpson, or her trumpet and beautiful singing, as arts prefect, Erica has left her mark on GNS. Erica's dedication and generosity have inspired her peers to be creative and laugh at their mistakes. She endears us with her quirky sense of humor, costume, costume, and surprise fist bumps when you least expect it, but need it most. Erica's ability to light up any room she's in will follow her to the University of British Columbia, where she will continue to study in the Faculty of Arts. Congratulations. Grace Poole. Hardworking and candid, Grace finds time for sailing, running, ultimate, sailing, working out, horse riding, and sailing. A griffin since grade one, Grace will miss the ability to turn the lab into a disaster in the name of science fair. When she is quiet, she is busy cooking up clever puns or trying to figure out what street she is driving on. In the future, we'll find her as a professional athlete with a really cool and nerdy side job. In the meantime, we wish her luck studying chemistry and computer science. Grace, we know you'll sail right through. Thank you. Thank you, Mademoiselle Harris. Kelly Poole, our even-keeled, never-stressed-out future meteorologist can either be found sailing, a theme here, studying, or hanging out with friends. It's no surprise that Kelly's favorite memory from GNS is playing at the junior school beach, a suitable beginning for our sailing expert. With a ready laugh, Kelly has navigated his way into our hearts, his witty jokes always lightening the tone of any room that he enters. A kind and hardworking student, Kelly will continue to improve the world at the University of Victoria, where he will study earth and ocean sciences with dreams to be part of the Canadian national sailing team. <laughs> Jong Min Su. A quiet, polite math genius, Jongmin's legacy was the time he innocently asked to use the washroom during class, but instead proceeded to walk home to make instant noodles. <laughs> Little did he know that an earthquake drill was scheduled for that block. His explanation of, but I was quite hungry, seemed fairly plausible coming from that innocent face. Jong Min will long cherish the memory of scoring his first goal in the last league game of the soccer season. Next year, he plans to study life science or biomedical science at the University of California, San Diego, and hopes one day to run his own business. <laughs> Tom Shields. Perhaps the most widely read young scholar to walk these GNS hallways, Tom has an illusion for every occasion. From politics to literature to cinema, everything's connected in his whip-sharp mind. Our quiet and clever grad will not shy away from challenges, and we know that his tenacity will lead him to many great places. Tom leaves us to study humanities at the University of McGill, where we are sure he will be dedicated to life and the pursuit of knowledge. Marissa Smith. The last and, dare we say, most devilishly delightful of the Smith clan to graduate from GNS, Marissa is universally acknowledged as nonsense game tyrant, cahoots enthusiast, and kind of saying weird things every so often. Over her time with us, Marissa has learned many valuable life skills, including how to frantically peer at it, apply physics to the streets, and outrun her friends. 
She has proved time and again that she is ready to take on any challenge, be it academic or wasabi, and that she balances her time as gracefully as she cartwheels. Marissa looks forward to studying business at the University of Victoria. <laughs> Finbar Sweeney. Beloved by peers, teachers, and coaches alike, since grade three, this nearly lifer has graced GNS with his presence and a trail of candy. Finbar fondly remembers the zip line at Camp David and his accomplishments on the senior boys basketball team. During his last years of high school, he could usually be found chilling in the library with the cool kids, playing games, talking about basketball, and sometimes doing homework. As Finbar heads off to the University of Victoria to study engineering, his kind heart and witty humor will be missed by all. <laughs> Jamie Tan. Although Jamie appears quiet and introverted, he is happy to talk to anyone and is very pleasant. However, he would secretly rather be at home, preferably sleeping, or playing video games in pajamas, or eating sushi in pajamas, or just eating in pajamas, of course. Jamie will have plenty of time to do that when he hangs up his GNS uniform to study social sciences at Western University, Apart from being a foodie, Jamie is a family guy and will miss our friendly community and his homestay dinners, but we know he will make new friends and one day he may even have his very own cat. <laughs> Brooke Taylor. If not on the pitch winning the next field hockey nationals, <laughs> Brooke will be somewhere else in the outdoors, mountain biking at Heartland, shredding the slopes of Mount Washington, or right here in Oak Bay, lugging her portable fire pit to Willows Beach for a late night marshmallow roast. And all of this while gracefully balancing her massive pile of homework. Kiteboard in hand and three lunches in her stomach, Brooke will head to the University of Victoria to play varsity field hockey and study sciences, where she will wear her banana bucket hat on a daily basis and thus make new friends wherever she goes. <laughs> Sophie Van Kylenborg. Since arriving at GNS in grade eight, Sophie has absolutely rocked the school by its socks. She's a dazzling basketball superstar, number two on the court, but number one in our hearts. Did you know she makes fantastic banana bread and also sings a mean karaoke version of Let It Go? Even on her worst day, our Sophie wears the brightest smile and lights up any room she walks into. Whether she attends McGill or the University of British Columbia next year, our beloved SAC prefect will single-handedly save our planet and make the world a better place. Andrew Whale. Sculling across the waves, booming on the trombone, pumping iron, or debating, Andrew always gives 100%. His unwavering commitment to the Comic Sans font was a constant source of distress to all of his teachers, but his dulcet tones rang with insight and eloquence. We learn to overlook his font choice, as every genius is allowed their quirks. This would-be trice ra trike race champion, right here, Andrew, uh, will miss his brunches and ordering pizza for the entire class. Andrew will take his diplomatic self, cool bow ties, and many gavels as he heads off to the University of British Columbia to study Arts One. Corn Wallace. 
This head prefect's rise to power came as no surprise to those who know him best. Corin, or Mr. Worldwide, is a lovely human being. His friends mark, like, not only does he want to make you feel comfortable and happy and stuff, but he's always able to tell what's wrong or what's going on with you. He is equally comfortable crushing in debate or dropping dimes on the b-ball court. Although he loved his time with the basketball team, he was not impressed with his teammates' rendition of, Oh, Canada. When they found out he'd earned his Canadian citizenship, it was at the urging of Mr. Thoreau. My apologies to Scotland. Uh, this last of the Wallace clan plans to attend the University of British Columbia to study engineering like, aye. <laughs> Lily Waters. At first glance, Lily appears quiet, well, shy even. Don't be fooled, she is no wallflower. Lily, or as some might know her, LJ, Lilius, or Louise, is animated, generous, and resilient. These qualities have served her well on the soccer field and basketball court. Her most defining moment of high school was going viral on TikTok. Lily will miss savoring chicken nuggets and fries in the library and chatting with Miss Dreary about life. She hopes to spend time traveling with her trusty ride jelly bean before heading off to the University of Victoria to pursue visual studies and humanities. <laughs> Katrina Way. Katrina arrived at GNS in grade eight and has blazed a path of academic glory ever since. While passionate about learning, Kat, Kato, Kit Kat, is also known for her love of the arts and ice cream. In art club, she combined these two passions to create the most exquisite ice cream ornament. One of her fondest memories is the Senior Reeves Home Form Wednesday Breakfast, uh, pre-COVID edition, of course. As Katrina heads to Queen's University to study health sciences, she regrets not seeing the upcoming reinvention of the Atkins Building but we invite this future pediatrician to be first in line to witness its grand opening. <laughs> Anders Woodruff. Some know Anders as the GNS debate and Munn legend, and others know him as the composer of the concert band piece Griffin. What few know is that the middle school debaters cheer whenever he walks in the room. In his spare time, you may find him vibing to EDM in his Crocs. Now, EDM for Mr. Thoreau and the other advanced uh, members of our community is electric da electronic dance music. Mr. Thoreau, it's electric, thank you, there you go. Speaking of Crocs, for Twins Day, he supplied all of his friends with a pair from his personal collection. Dress Crocs, casual Crocs, cabin Crocs, you get the idea. He will take a gap year to consider offers from many universities in the field of computer engineering. And Anders, when you take over the world through algorithms, just remember all of us at GNS. <laughs> Hannah Yeen. Certified mum friend, social justice warrior, gotcha, sacrificial lamb, and debate her, most likely, to fight her opponents and the judges. Since joining GNS in grade 10, Hannah has single-handedly fed a group of teenagers with everything from homemade dumplings to baby crackers and bubble tea. Referring to her friends as masters, mostly just to distress Marissa, Hannah, in fact, serves every level of her community. Cultural prefect, flute player, pipa performer, and G and Jimon director. Looking to her future, Hannah hopes to not be unemployed after earning her poli sci degree at the University of Toronto. We hope she'll come back to visit, with dumplings, of course. <laughs> Sarah Zarzor. Sarah is incredibly stealthy so much so that she'd be an asset to any bank heist. She is also a super fast runner, or at least went out running wild beasts while camping with friends. Frequently found in the learning commons, earning her role as the puzzle master extraordinaire, Sarah is forever the peacemaker among her friends. 
She also had the stomach to make it through Miss Mike's infamous liver lab, while those with a weaker constitution fled the scene. Joining a select group of candidates studying kinesiology, Sarah will face the frosty, frigid Alberta winters at the University of Calgary, and we say, dress warmly, Sarah. Everyone, I present to you the Glenline Norfolk School Class of 2021. As we are celebrating this wonderful grad class, it is appropriate we have our grad prefect and head prefects conclude our afternoon as they speak on behalf of their fellow graduates. We begin with our grad prefect, Morgan McDonald. In a year where the qualities of strength and resilience have never been more important, I'm extremely proud of everything that each one of us in our 2021 graduating class has accomplished. First, I'm going to share my personal story of the strength and resilience that I've developed over the past year. It is an experience that has fundamentally shaped my graduating year and made me the person I am today. I believe that reflection is key at this moment in our lives as we graduate from high school and start a new and unforeseen chapter. It's easy to become lost and overwhelmed at all of the opportunities that lie before us. So I encourage you all to take a moment, take a deep breath, and do a little bit of thinking about what experiences in your adolescent life have made you the person you are today. On December 23rd, 2019, I returned home from an international service trip to Borneo, Malaysia, that was just under three weeks long. While I had learned a new confidence in my character, beliefs, and values, and I had no doubt been challenged in more ways than one, my trip to Borneo marks the beginning of my journey of strength. I returned from this trip having lost some weight, as I was so anxious that I could hardly eat anything but rice for three weeks. This sent me down a spiral of anxiety after people kept complimenting my noticeable weight loss upon my return home. July of 2020, I was diagnosed with an eating disorder, commonly known as anorexia nervosa. Prior to my diagnosis, I had only ever heard of anorexia in scenarios that glamorized disordered eating in the fashion and entertainment industry. At first, I didn't believe that there was anything wrong with me. This was until I learned that anorexia is the most fatal mental health disorder, as shown by recent research studies. Shortly after my diagnosis in July, I was told that I was underweight and at risk of heart failure. I had to choose to either accept recovery and fight the monster in my head or be sent to a treatment center in Vancouver, which would derail my plans to graduate with my classmates in, ju in June. This is where my experience with my eating disorder connects with my graduation year. The little piece of myself that hadn't been consumed by my disease spoke up and I chose to listen to it. I was determined to make a full recovery as the idea of having my grade 12 year ripped away from me was terrifying. After starting my recovery journey back in July, I've spent a lot of time reclaiming my relationship with my body and myself. I am proud to announce that as of February, I have recovered, and I hope that by sharing this story with my platform today, I can raise some awareness about a mental health disorder that affects many, yet is rarely talked about. For so long, I felt ashamed and embarrassed in my anorexia, but now I view it as something that helped me to build resilience and strength. These two words, resilience and strength, are two qualities that everyone here in this room possesses. While your story may be different than mine, we have all built resilience and strength throughout this crazy and unpredictable year, and I am confident that our graduating class is going to carry these qualities out into our adventures in our upcoming years of young adulthood. Now that you have heard my journey of strength, I challenge you to ask yourselves, what has your journey of strength been? Whether it's been caring for a loved one, finding new ways to play your favorite sport during COVID, or managing anxiety during IB exam season, this year has thrown many challenges at us and we are graduating as stronger individuals for it. 
I want to thank all of the parents of our 2021 graduating class who have provided their continuous love and support from driving us to play rehearsals, sports practices, and band concerts, or a much scarier version, letting us drive ourselves, to cooking our favorite meal to cheer us up when we're feeling down, and for showering us with your constant love, hugs, and advice. It is because of you that we have made it this far. Perhaps one of the most important things that I learned this year is that sometimes things do not go as planned, and we can't control everything that happens to us, but that's okay. We can learn and become stronger from the adversities and challenges that are thrown our way. While we may not be getting to graduate with our families here in person, let's focus on the fact that we can graduate with each other, the people who we have learned, laughed, and maybe even cried with throughout our time spent here at GNS. Our grade has such a strong bond that I know will remain long after we roam the halls of Goodwill, Atkins, and Simpson. Our graduating class is full of change makers, strong, resilient individuals who will use their voices, their talents, and their passions to bring change to our communities in a time when change is desperately needed. Like Rhea, whose 11th grade science fair project was using different sugars to prevent bacterial infections in the body, and her twin sister Shreya, whose 10th grade science fair project was engineering gold nanoparticles to absorb the light of a green laser. Side note, when they were explaining these projects to me, I just smiled and acted as if I understood. Or like Finbar, who built an epic go-kart for the 10th grade personal project, or Tara, who earned gold at the BC Games for Judo, while also refereeing the sport and comp coaching and competing in sailing. Furthermore, each person in this room can be described as a hyphenate. A few examples I've come up with are Brooke Taylor, kiteboarder, pie baker, field hockey star, Jacob McIntyre, math god, fashionista, Mariah Carey diva, Alexander muller Clem, sports fan, opinionated debater, game show host, Zoe Hammond, baller, biologist, Instagram food blogger, while well, I only have time to name a few, to be a hyphenate is to be diverse and to carry an open identity, which describes every member of our graduating class. We are graduating in a time of great social and political importance, so I invite each of you to ask yourselves, what has this year meant to you? A year that symbolizes the transition into the next chapter of our lives, where we will apply our learnings into the real world, where we will bring our strength and resilience into practice. May we find paths that inspire and excite us, and may we live our lives doing what we love with the people who we love. May we embrace the world with an open mind, body, and spirit. Thank you. Thank you so much, Morgan, not only for your work in helping make the grad 2021 year memorable, but also for your very thoughtful comments and remarks. I now invite our head prefects to the stage to speak on behalf of their fellow graduates, Cora and Avon. teachers, students, parents, honored guests, and fellow graduates. My name is Ava Dryden. My name is Corin Wallace, and this year Ava and I have had the pleasure of being the Glenline Norfolk School Head Prefects. Today, we welcome, it's not really welcome, but we're closing the graduation ceremony for our class of 2021. As you all know, we live in unprecedented times. We faced real challenges this year, alongside our families and the world. But this was also our grad year, so it was unprecedented for us, as we learned the importance of our confusing but true grade eight slogan, make the, take the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> this year, we had the usual grad wear and exams, but also hand sanitizer. We had uh, unprecedented cohorting of our social lives, mask fashions, desk cleaning. I'm sure there's a really great metaphor for life hiding in those arrows all around our hallways. <laughs> I, for one, will be glad to follow my own path in every sense of the word next year. Yes, our graduation year has certainly been unprecedented. For most of us, today marks the end of 13 years of education. For our parents, today may just be one step closer to a camper van and the open road. <laughs> We've come a long way from junior kindergarten to this very day, 
especially in the past year. And so, as we look to the future, we'd like to talk to you about growth. Not only have we grown mentally and physically over our time at GNS, but we've also grown in numbers to become the class sitting before you today. And so, to aid us in telling the story of the class of 2021, we will use some key moments in our journey to help you visualize our progression throughout the years. Let's get started. Our story begins once upon a time, circa 2003. This is an incredibly momentous year. The Human Genome Project finishes. NASA finds the oldest exoplanet known to man. Most importantly, Anders Woodruff comes bursting out of the womb as a 19th percentile baby. Yes. Our parents take us home and our time as babies begins. As infants, we enter the perpetual cycle of eating, sleeping, and crying. This would continue for the next 18 years. <laughs> Some of our parents mark our heights against the wall. Our average height, one foot, eight inches tall. In the following three years, we learn to walk, speak, and read. Some of us enter a preschool where we begin to explore the wonders of human interaction. Our parents watch us grow, and before they know it, we've reached an average height of three feet on the wall. Unfortunately for Ava and I, this is about when we stop growing, so. <laughs> Now it's time for us to embark for grade school as we enter junior kindergarten. Yes. <laughs> for 8% of our graduating class, this is when their relationship with Glen Lyon Norfolk begins. Little did they know, on the beach, they would find lifelong friends and apparently business partners. Grads remember the various trading posts for sea glass, rocks, and crabs that were constructed from driftwood. Our years in elementary school are action-packed and teach us valuable lessons. As the years go on, the number of current students experiencing the beach campus grows. They become the big, big kids and decide they are too sophisticated for the size to light up sketchers they used to wear. Our graduates create memories of intense whip war competitions and Mr. Bowers throwing himself off the roof for the annual Jump Rope for Heart fundraiser. Some find a love for rowing to Jimmy Chicken Island, while others decide to just enjoy the ride. In these early years, we develop an appreciation for sharing, a skill that would be crucial when searching for the perfect color for each part of the Canadian map. No small feat when it comes to none of it, or when coming together to problem solve as we discovered the meaning of homework. We leave the junior school in the fifth grade with 30.2% of our grad class, now members of GNS. This lucky bunch earned the sought after yellow IB pin. And now we move inland to the Pemberton Woods campus. Grade six, we are marked at four foot eight inches on the wall. 41.3% of our graduates have arrived and we are in a whole new world. We are now the little kids again and the thought of one day becoming the cool and mysterious grade 12s seems like centuries down the road. Middle school was a time of self-discovery and a sudden need for personal hygiene. <laughs> it was an exciting time of newfound independence as we were given our own school email account while sitting in Mr. Pimlot's design dungeon and a locker like they have in every single teenage movie. 2021 seems so far away. We speed through many trips to Camp David, feast at culture fests, challenge ourselves in Greek day obstacles, and finally become a famous person of the past at Gallery of Fame. We end grade eight with 61.9% of our current grad class as we move to the other side of the campus, the senior school. The first two years of high school are filled with hundreds of dollars spent on cafeteria cookies and trips to the candy store, helping us to get through science fairs, Shakespeare days, and of course, the personal project. We successfully finish the middle years program and receive our red IB pins with 93.7% of our graduating class. During this time, we had not only grown in our height, but also in our knowledge. Finally, we arrive at the diploma program. In these last two years, we are motivated by new numbers. The grades on our transcripts seem to match our new ways, and we agonize over scholarships and GPAs for our dream university programs. We tow the 10-minute line in our English oral commentaries and do our best to keep Dr. Hager from shouting at us in the Atkins lab. Each day might feel uncertain, but we manage to live in the moment. At least one of us masters the skill of dunking a basketball, two Gandhis lost gotcha despite playing their identical advantage, and many belted out songs in the theater. Other aspects of our lives can't be counted or measured. 
Our friendships grew deeper. Our understanding oops, sorry, of the world grew broader. And we achieved full mastery of the art of procrastination. Sorry, fix the cap. Oh no, there we go. <laughs> the word pandemic might have been mentioned a few times over the course of this evening. Within this seemingly daunting word, the term epic can be found. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> this is a word that I think perfectly describes our graduating class and the experiences in this past year. Corin does not think this works. I'm skeptical. But I do, <laughs> and here's why. No matter what this year threw at us, our grad class was epic, making the best of each situation and adopting optimism over defeat. By embracing a new perspective, the word epic can be found in pandemic, almost, or at least our grad class made it feel that way. Grade 12 was a hectic year. We weren't able to participate in the usual grad traditions, and it felt as though we were losing what made grade 12 special. There was constant uncertainty around events, games, and performances, and many of our students felt as though they were waiting for chances that would never come. However, we didn't let this stop us from creating new opportunities, making this year ours to remember. With spirit weeks, Oscar assemblies, and chaotic game shows, we truly learned to take nothing for granted. At the end of the day, while it seems like we've had an unlucky year, it's important to remember our situation relative to others. The pandemic has cost us the normal graduating year, and yet, there was a time when it was worse for us. A year ago, we lived in sweatpants and woke up to Miss Chatterton's forehead no further than three inches from her camera. <laughs> These were dark times. And yet, other schools are still stuck losing face-to-face -face connection completely and with none of the activities we got to enjoy. Everything which we have achieved, the tears we might have cried, or the laughs we might have had, bring us here today, June 21st, 2021. With an average height of five feet nine inches, <laughs> our grad class has finished growing. 100% of us are in this room or attending virtually. We may come from different places, Canada, oh my gosh, no, we're just gonna take this off for now. <laughs> Canada, China, Germany, Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, and Vietnam, but today we are all graduating together. Let's make it clear, this class would be exceptional in any year. We do not see this grad class as the pandemic year, but one that is full of incredibly compassionate, determined, and remarkable leaders who have left an impressive legacy despite a pandemic. We are confident that you are looking at a class that will find success in whatever form that comes, each in our own way. At the end of the day, our successes don't come solely from our future endeavors, but also from being the wonderfully unique and special people each of us have grown into over our time at GNS. The future is uncertain, but here's what we know for sure. We are grateful for the people around us. To the staff and teachers at GNS, thank you. Thank you for being our therapists and for putting up with us and our loudness. Your constant dedication throughout the years has encouraged us to be better students and people. You have challenged us in ways which have prepared us for whatever life brings while supporting us and doing your best to make our time at GNS the best it could be. To our parents, we may have outgrown you in height, but we will never outgrow loving you. Thank you for putting up with us when we were two or when we were 17 and acting like we were two. <laughs> we love you and we hope we will make you proud. And finally, to our peers, thank you for growing with us and for the numerous memories we will hold on to for years to come. Each and every one of you have created an inclusive and supportive environment from which we have all been able to become our own unique selves. This grad class is filled with kind and selfless people, and we know each of you are bound to do amazing things. Thank you for the last 14 unforgettable years. You've come so far, and who knows where you'll go. Stay epic, enjoy your summer, and please never stop growing. Thank you.
Thank you, Ava and Corin, for your wonderful remarks, but also for your amazing leadership throughout this challenging and unique year. You have set an example that the entire GNS community has been able to follow, and we thank you from the deepest and the bottom of our hearts, and congratulations on our wonderful leadership year for you both. This brings our, our ceremony to a close, and we thank everyone far and, and very near in Denver Hall, but also many, 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 many countries away. Uh, we, we hope you have a good summer and a great evening, and we look forward to seeing our grads and their families tomorrow for a photo event. And with this, we conclude our graduation ceremony, and we'll stop our streaming now.